Good morning all. Today I thought I'd do a review. Um, I haven't done one for a while. So I got this YDD Tech cordless screwdriver uh, on eBay, 6 volt, and it has the convenience that it takes four 1.5 volt AA batteries. Now of course that might be convenient, but it might also be a downside. There's going to be a lot of contact resistance in there. So is this thing going to be any good? Well, let's find out. Now the decision to purchase this was difficult because it wasn't that cheap. It was about nine US dollars, I think. Yeah, this is it. Um, 12 pieces, that's the screwdriver plus all the bits. Portable six volt cordless electric screwdriver tool drill gimlet. What's a gimlet? $8.23.99 shipping. This came from CSK Win 2015. Uh, all in and I mean I've been to Aldi and Lidl recently and seen like a 20 volt uh, lithium cordless drill with detachable five cell battery you get the drill you get the battery you get the charger for 20 pounds so you can get some really good deals on cordless tools and that's a proper dual speed with gearbox variable speed trigger this thing probably is just on or off and is it going to have the power of lithium? Certainly not, if it takes AA batteries. Uh, the other thing is, this is quite big. I mean, it's physically big, quite heavy. It's going to be even heavier with the batteries in there. It's ugly. It's a horrible colour. So, yeah, around about $9. What's that, about £8? It's a lot of money to spend on something which may not be very good. Uh, you do get a set of little tool bits here, flat. Uh, screwdriver bits, uh, some Torx, and some, oh, Phillips, no posi drive in there. Right, I need to find some batteries. Now, do I go for alkalines or nickel metal hydride? The performance is probably very similar, so I'll see what I've got available. So a handy, handy little carrier for the uh, AA cells. But of course, there's another contact here where that slides into a couple of contacts in there. Uh, which is going to add extra resistance, so I'm not sure. Uh, well, I've got a very random assortment of batteries, a Class Olsen, a Pound Shot one, Power Cell, uh, a Jessup's one, and a GP Ultra. I've no idea what state they're in, so if it's a bit slow, I'll go to Nickel Metal Hydride, which might pep it up a bit. Um, these contacts, oh, actually, it's not a bad fit, but they're just bent over bits of metal. They don't look very substantial yeah so it's just um the metal that comes off this connector there just bent over but it doesn't look like it's been very professionally done so loaded up with uh, alkaline cells let's put that back in there yep yeah, it fits oh this switch does work we've got reverse and forwards they do work yeah, it doesn't sound like it's got a lot of power though, so I might have to switch to um, nickel metal hydride fairly soon. But now we need to give this a realistic challenge, so let me have a think. Well, challenge not needed because uh, I just have to put my hand on there and it slows down to nothing. So maybe these batteries are in a poor state. Let's get some Eneloops, and I have just charged all my Eneloops, so let's put some of them in. So four brand newly charged, well charged yesterday, uh, and a loop. So let's get them in there and see if this thing has a little more power. Oh yes, those were flat. Oh, that's got a fair bit of power actually. I mean, this will be geared. There's going to be some sort of planetary gearbox in here. Yeah, right. I need to give this a tough test. So tough, but realistic. I'm going to use this two millimeter drill is this magnetic yes it is that's magnetic um to drill some holes in here now that shouldn't be a problem i'm gonna have to move the camera back and then i'm going to use um, a screwdriver bit to put these uh oh i can't remember i think they're about an inch long into the holes that i've drilled with the two mil bit let's give it all a try yeah this whole assembly is quite long so it's going to be up in the camera's face a bit i'm afraid Let's see if I can get my hands out of the way. Right, um, 
that's okay, but you can't pull this back out because the magnetic gripper, there's also a massive amount of play in here, far more than you'd want. Some of it is in the uh, quarter inch hex slot, but some of it, I think, is also in the output shaft. So that's wobbling around like crazy. Let's try it again. I mean, this is only um, a screwdriver. I think it's described as a screwdriver. It's not really a drill. So yeah, you can't pull that back out. That's a problem if you want to use it as a drill. You see my little Ryobi uh, four volt lithium, so it's a single cell lithium, has a gripping uh, attachment. So if I put that on there, I can then draw it back out still under power. And of course this doesn't have that. So it's not really a drill, is it? It's really only a driver. Okay, well, let's try driving a screw into that hole. I'll use one of the supply bits, um, PH2 I'll use, because these screws, um, I'm pretty sure they're PH. Yes, that's a very good fit. In fact, let's have a look at the box that these came in. Okay, these are actually 3.9, so I presume that's the, the, the biggest, the widest diameter is 3.9. I mean, that's nearly four. It sounds like a lot by 25 millimeters. So, yeah, so that's going to be forced into this two millimeter drilled hole. This is a combination I use quite a lot, so it should be fine. Let's give it a try. So can the YDD tech um, put this screw all the way into that hole? About to find out. Here we go. Well, it's not bad. That's sunk almost flush. And there was a fair bit of gripping noise. So it's not doing a bad job. Is that getting warm? Yeah, it is getting slightly warm. Yeah. Okay, so let's accept that the YDD that uh, is not going to be suitable as a drill. I'm going to use the Ryobi to drill the remaining holes. Let's drill four or five more. And as I say, it's easy to pull that back out because it grips the bit. There's a little bit of wobble on this, but it's not as much wobble as on that screwdriver. It doesn't matter with the screwdriver so much because the you've already got something which is holding this centered with a drill. You really do need something that's a little bit more, well, centered, centered by itself. Let's do one more. Okay, four holes, we'll put four screws in. Right, come on, YDD Tech and Eneloop. That combination, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, it does grind to a complete halt when the screw gets close to bottoming out. But it does seem to have enough power to put them in virtually flush. That uh, aerial shot wasn't really showing it off to its best, was it? Yeah, it doesn't have um, any form of clutch, slip clutch, but it just stops when it gets to a certain torque, which I suppose is quite handy. Not adjustable, of course. Let's do a few more in this orientation because it just looks nicer, doesn't it? I mean, there is a fair bit of grip there, which you can hear. So it's not doing a bad job considering. Yeah, it has got some torque, not bad at all, really. We'll have to take this apart in a minute and have a look at how it's geared. And whether those gears are plastic or metal. And as I say, it's really got one torque setting, which is full stall. Actually, I'm just interested to know whether the Ryobi can um, take these in any further. I'll put it on its uh, maximum torque setting and uh, just see if we can take those in completely flush. I'll move the camera again. So let's see how it does. Oh no, absolutely nothing. Uh, it's on um, gear two, so let's put it on gear one. Yeah, just a little 
little bit of additional torque. Yeah, so this is driving them in a little bit. Oh yeah, quite a bit further actually. So yeah, the YDD Tech with its um, nickel metal hydride batteries and all the contact resistance doesn't really have the guts that this lithium drill driver has. So how does this thing come apart? Well, obviously I can take the battery pack out. Um, there are a couple of pins in here, so I suspect they've been driven uh, through these slots. So let's see if I can drift those out. Uh, yes, very easily it would seem. I'm just pushing these two pins out. That gets those out. And does that? Oh yeah, that just drops off. Lots of nice grease in there. So we have a plastic uh, pinion gear there, presumably directly on the end of the motor shaft. And you can see that there are three gears in there. So there's some sort of planetary gearbox. So let's see if I can take this part a little bit more. I've just put the battery pack in here, so we'll just listen to that motor. It doesn't sound particularly powerful, but of course it runs quite fast. Okay, gearbox then is the most interesting part. Right, this plate lifts out. Now this is all covered in uh, a, a bluey white or greeny white grease. So I'm not entirely sure what that is. But it's got a sort of greeny yellow colour. Just some industrial grease, probably. Actually, this piece of wood lives outside, so I can put my greasy bits on there. Now, oh yes, look at that. That's I'm turning the shaft. I'm not turning it much, and there's a lot of movement there. So there's further gearing underneath that. Let's see if we can get it any further. Uh, these look like they lift off, but it looks like they might lift off. Oh yes, there we are, as a complete assembly. Oh, and there are more gears underneath. Look at that. All stacked and tiered. That's a lot of gears. So can I lift this second row of gears out? This, I think there's some... There's an outer... Um, I don't know what it's called. Is it a crown gear? This uh, Where the teeth are on the inside. Inside the body of this thing. It's quite hard to show because of the lighting. But I'm just going to try... Lifting, possibly these have to come off individually. Ah, there's one, I think, off its shaft. There we are. Um, I imagine these are symmetrical, so it probably doesn't matter which up, way up I put these, but I'll try and keep them the same way up that they are in here. Now, the, the holder, which obviously rotates with the output shaft, oh, one-to-one -one ratio there, doesn't seem to want to come out. So maybe it's pushed onto... Uh, the metal shaft and that won't come out I don't want to distort these yes yeah, so I think that might be a press fit but that's a one-to-one -one, uh, drive there so yeah there are just two stacked sets of gears interesting so the way this works is that the uh, little pinion on the end of the motor sits inside this set of three gears now they're sitting inside a serrated inner edge in the gearbox housing. So there's a reduction there. And then on the underside of this, there's another little pinion. So we've got one set of reduction here. That then sits inside these three gears, which are mounted on the final output shaft. And that's what gives a further reduction to the output shaft of the entire unit. So I was trying to work out how this thing comes apart, and one side just has come apart. The other side is proving a bit more resistant. I'm just wondering whether they've glued... Oh, yes, I think perhaps they did glue the two halves <laughs> together. But there's the motor. How does this switch work? That's quite intriguing. Let's have a look at that. Oh, I see how this works. So these two contacts have two rings. They, they run around in a circle. There's an inner ring on this inner contact and an outer ring and they're concentric. And then this mechanism actually slides backwards and forwards because of course it's got to do a full reversal of the contacts. That didn't sound good. Something went click and moved, which doesn't sound very, very good. 
Um, so actually the motor connections, which have been just bent through this plastic, have to be moved from the inner concentric ring to the outer concentric ring. Well, one has to move one way and the other has to move in effect the opposite way. Of course, it's the same movement where this is concerned. But yeah, that's quite clever for reversing the connections, these two connections, to the connections of the motor with this thing. But something's gone click and now it doesn't feel quite right. Hmm. I think I might have rotated it, this with respect to uh, the inner piece. It does seem to be a bit more symmetrical now. Let's just make sure that can drive the motor in both directions. Yeah, that's fine. So it's just making sure that these two pieces are aligned in a rotational sense. Right, let's put it back together. So I think the uh, case halves are just literally a push fit. There are pins and receptacles but there are no clips so actually it's it's really nice from the point of view of taking it apart it comes comes apart really quite easily let's put the battery pack back in there which fits quite well and the motor runs in both directions yeah there's some really quite nice things about the design of this even if it's a bit useless from um, an end user point of view now I've got to get these gears back in here and it's slightly tricky because you've got to tip them under the the uh, teeth around the outside first. So get it tipped under there and then try and get it on its shaft, which is slightly awkward. It might help just to bias it. I think that's, oh yes, that's gone on. So that's two in there. Let's just get the third one in there. And then this uh, gear assembly, I think, just drops into the middle of here. That's not the middle. There's so much grease in here. It adds a huge amount of resistance to the movement of this. Um, but then I guess it's necessary to have all these gears, and they do have to be greased, uh, to get the gear ratio necessary to get enough power on the output shaft. But yeah, masses of grease. And of course, every time I start and stop my phone, it's going all over my phone. So now I just have to put that back on the end of there. Oh, there's actually a recess. Oh, they're identical, so it should go either way around. Oh, yes, I didn't align the uh, first gear, did I? And uh, there it is. Gearbox reduction to the output shaft. So I'm just got to push these two pins in. They don't seem to be anything, any locking mechanism. They just seem to just sit there. Oh, maybe they're locked by the fact that there's a little bit of tension on here. And that just holds them in there. Let me just try and drift them into position with this spike. Yeah, there's a bit of resistance in the middle. They could, I suppose, just slide out on their own. But yeah, that's it. So summing up, do I like this or do I not like it? Well, I quite like some of the techniques that have been used. The Reversing switch is really quite clever with those concentric rings. I quite like that. And I love the gearbox. Um, those two levels, or those two layers of planetary gears. So I quite like that. I, I even quite like this battery compartment with its contacts that run in. You can get that out, which is now difficult because my hands are all covered in grease. 